Interesting. Oh, hey, what's up, everyone? I am the Kaijin no Kami, and Halloween month continues with a small retrospective on Frankenstein. It's pronounced Frankenstein. Perhaps, however, I'm an American heathen, therefore, it's pronounced Frankenstein. The name Frankenstein has become quite iconic in the world of horror and cinema thanks to Universal's 1931 classic featuring Boris Karloff. It's alive! Oh, it's alive! It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! <laughs> However, did you know that their movie was only loosely based on Mary Shelley's original novel written during the year without a summer? Granted, that may seem like a dumb question today, but back then, producer Carl Lemley believed no one cared about a story that was over a hundred years old at the time and chose to do his own thing with elements from Shelley's original work. In Shelley's original story, a college student named Victor Frankenstein has become obsessed with the belief of bringing the dead back to life and ends up stitching a man together from various body parts he was able to acquire in his studies. What he created was a seven foot monstrosity with long black hair and yellow skin and in a moment of weakness, Victor's own horror of his creation allowed the creature to escape and roam around the countryside of a German cottage. Now, if you are familiar with the image of the monster in the modern day, you probably know that it is based on the Boris Karloff design of the 31 film, which looks nothing like his Shelley counterpart. Even movie adaptations that proclaim to be more accurate to the novel fail to recapture the look of her monster. In fact, they often also tend to copy the Karloff look, which goes to show how iconic Universal's original film became. They also for some reason changed Victor to Henry, and then named the other character in the book that was named Henry to Victor. I don't know, probably just to Americanize it. It's kind of weird. Is the 1931 film the be-all, end-all of Frankenstein adaptations? As much as I love the film and enjoy Carlos' performance as the monster, as he is one of my favorite actors, I'm gonna have to respond to that with a big no, at least in my personal opinion. Don't get me wrong, it's a wonderfully atmospheric horror film that fits with the times and most of the actors are fantastic in their performances. Nevertheless, I don't think it is the best adaptation of the Frankenstein story, and it really isn't due to its inability of being a precise depiction of the original tale, as no film out there has ever portrayed Shelley's story to a T. There was even an adaptation done in 1910 by Thomas Edison's movie company that failed to recapture the original tale, which has also been deemed as being the first horror film ever made. Following that, decades later, was Kenneth Branagh's film that pretends it is accurate while completely botching it entirely. The only thing the film succeeded in was becoming the most boring version to date. Even the 1997 House of Frankenstein television miniseries was far superior compared to that train wreck Brana provided. What makes it worse is the terrible miscasting of Robert De Niro as the monster, who had no business being in the film at all. One of the worst atrocities to it is how it handles the material from the book of the monster wanting Victor to create him a mate. In the novel, Victor initially agrees to the notion, only to regret his decision while in the process of creating her and destroys her before completing the second being. For the movie version, Victor uses the core of his wife the monster murdered for his basis of being the monster's mate. I have no idea why Brana thought this was a good idea, but it wasn't. Uh, uh, Leave her alone! Uh, no! Get away from her, she's mine! She's mine! She's in my name! With that in mind, my favorite version of the story is the one Hammer Films did in 1957 titled The Curse of Frankenstein. I'm not sure what it is about this film I love more than the 1931 film, I just do. It could be the gothic setting that situates the story in its correct time period, or it may be Peter Cushing's phenomenal performance as Victor despite being twice the age of the character. Another possibility is in the manner used for Victor to animate his vile creation, which was left ambiguous in Shelley's story. Yes, it's quite fascinating when you read the story of Frankenstein and come to learn that Victor intentionally does not reveal what methods he used to bring the creature to life. He just says he did it, leaving every movie adaptation to come up with their own unique method for bringing the monster to life. 
I find that to be very ingenious, even if unintentional, as it requires the filmmakers to execute their own sense of creativity. Another positive to the film is Christopher Lee's ghastly appearance as the monster. He's just as inaccurate in presentation as Karloff's, and yet comes across far more menacing and violent when compared to the Karloff incarnation thanks to his monstrous mobility. He feels like he could just rip you apart, whereas the Karloff monster would have to stumble slowly in order to kill you. On the other hand, Universal Reckoning the monster's death in the original film allowed them to make a sequel that has the monster learning how to articulate his speech like the novel did, whereas Lee's creature was never given that opportunity. Ash, go! You live! Go! Stay. Instead, Hammer decided to have their sequels follow the exploits of Victor rather than the monster himself, which was an intriguing concept compared to what Universal did, which always featured the monster being resurrected in the last act of the film whether it made sense or not. The biggest problem for Hammer is that they retold the origin story of Victor and the monster three times over in their seven movie series, completely destroying continuity like there was no tomorrow. Sure, Universal's continuity required some extensive finagling to work, but at least they tried. I feel like Hammer just gave up on caring after their second film for their third movie completely changed Victor's entire backstory, while the sixth film in the series featured a new actor playing Victor with another retelling of the Shelley story, only this time with an actor who actually resembled the Victor of the novel. Which also features the monster being played by the suit actor for Darth Vader himself, David Prowse who does a pretty good job and might be more accurate to Shelley's novel compared to the Lee and Karloff versions. I'm Victor Frankenstein. Regardless of which adaptation you prefer, there is no denying how impactful Shelley's work has been to the world of pop culture. The Frankenstein monster has become a staple in the world of monsters and has been seen in various video games, television shows, movies, and so on. Whether he is just a mindless boss you battle in a Castlevania game, <laughs> the butler to a freakish family, <laughs> The father of another family. Why don't you take him down to see our family doctor, Dr. Dudley? No, no, I think you should take him. After all, you are the boy's father, and it's a very serious problem. Being parodied. You guys got the wrong house. What do you mean we got the wrong house? You got the wrong house. Frankenstein lives, uh, yeah, he lives over there. To being a side character in movies like Van Helsing. I have the nothing room, and yet you and your kind all wish me dead. Or even being a part of the greatest horror comedy ever made. We mm. tend to forget the mm. simple pleasures. Mm. That are the basis for true happiness. Mm. But yes, yes, yes. You almost always know who he is, even if you are unfamiliar with the origins behind this tumultuous titan. The biggest question he brings to the table when you think of him is who is actually the monster? The man who brought him into a world that misunderstands him to the point of hatred? Or is he indeed the monster for the atrocities he commits to those around him? And actually, isn't that what matters most? Getting the point of cross of who is actually the bigger monster? The man or the monster? And if that's the case, and that's what pretty much all the movie adaptations do for when they adapt this story, then is there really a wrong adaptation? I don't know. You decide. What is your favorite adaptation of the Frankenstein story? Let me know, and until next time, bye!
I've always wanted to say that.